Today, I am the last resort. Another shop in town is in a pickle with some oddball Ford transmission mounted parking brake parts and we're trying to pull off a Hail Mary. These are the shattered remains of a Ford ZF transmission mounted parking brake assembly. This is off of a mid 90s F Super Duty with a manual transmission. This is not one of Ford's better ideas. What they do is they use the four wheel drive version of the transmission, but instead of a transfer case, they bolt this parking brake assembly to the back of the transmission. Just like a transfer case, it has its own bearings and it's essentially its own sealed unit separate from the transmission. Also, like a transfer case, it has its own oil, but very few people seem to know that. And this is what happens when all of that oil leaks out. Very bad things. There's no shortage of carnage. The bearings are smoked, the housing is smoked, the speedo gear is smoked. The shaft is pretty much smoked. The nut is completely smoked. I think it actually came off and was just rattling around for long enough that it completely wiped out the threads. So, yeah, there's not a lot we can do with this. They did the smart thing, and they bought a complete replacement unit. Assembled, tested, ready to install. The problem is, it's not the same. This shaft is a lot different than the old shaft. And that means... This U-joint adapter won't bolt up, and even if it would bolt up, we would have to shorten the drive line. So that's no good. But the real problem is the place he bought this thing from will not take it back. And they don't have the right one to send him to exchange it. So he's basically stuck with this thing. And unless we can make it work, he's basically gonna flush a thousand dollars right down the toilet. So that's our mission, to figure out this mechanical jigsaw puzzle and put this thing back together so that he can make it work. There are no good options, so we gotta pick the least bad option. The initial plan was to machine this flange down so this thing would bolt up and then machine this surface down to move everything forward so the drive line would be happy but I don't think I've got enough room to do that. Because these pockets here are the clearance for the drive shaft yoke, and they're pretty much right on this surface. So there's only about that much we can machine off before we're taking up space we don't have. Yeah, I don't know, that'd be a lot of work. I think the best thing to do is try to rework this old spindle. It's beat up, but I think the important surfaces are still there. There must have been something here for the speedometer gear, and that is completely chewed away. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the speedometer cable is broken anyway, so he doesn't care if we revive that. There's also some, yeah, some pretty bad galling up here and some on the seal surface. But the actual surface where the bearing races press on isn't too bad. So that's my initial plan. We're gonna chuck this up. We'll see if we can fix this seal surface and then we'll try to rework the threads. The, th the threads are pretty, they're pretty mangled. If we can reuse this piece, that should solve most of our problems. I think it'll just catch the chamfer on the center and the chamfer on the spindle.
think that's close enough. It's within half a thousand. We need to clean up this surface for the seal and then try to clean up the threads. This shaft is forged steel and it's it's harder than a nine dollar jawbreaker but I think carbide will cut it. So my plan is to use this super sharp carbide insert that's made for cutting aluminum and I'm hoping I can just skim the tiniest little amount off this seal surface. It's right on diameter right now. You can actually still see the groove there that the seal had worn into it. Typically, you know, plus minus five thousandths on a seal surface is no problem. Plus minus ten thousandths really isn't an issue. Bigger seals can have more than that. But we're going to try to take as little as possible and we'll just see what happens. It doesn't have to be great to make a good seal. Alright, that was two thousandths, and I actually think that's good enough. If we try to get greedy, we're just going to screw it up. So that's good. I'm going to knock that little corner off there, but that worked fantastically. The threads, I'm not so sure what we're going to do about that. Hopefully they're not as hard as the rest of this thing. I don't have a new nut, so we need to reuse this one. Unfortunately, there's some damage to the threads from where they unstaked it, so the best way to fix it would be to run a big tap through here, but I don't have one. So the second best way to fix it is just to grind out the damaged portions of the threads. And yes, you're going to reduce the strength a little bit, but there's still a whole lot of threads in there, so it should be fine. We'll try to take as little as possible. That should be enough. I'm going to give this spot over here a little tickle and then we should be good to go. Our thread pitch appears to be 1.5 millimeter. So we need to set our lathe to millimeters and then 1.5 millimeter is 8 on this dial and 2 on this lever. Then we need our change gears in that configuration, which they already are. One thing I like about this lathe, it's very easy to set it up to cut almost any thread you can think of. It can cut these modulus threads, inch, metric, pretty much any feed you can think of. And the nice thing is this lathe can cut the odd threads, 13, 21, 27 threads per inch without using a special change gear. A lot of these kind of universal lathes that I've run into have a hard time cutting those threads. We've got to engage the lead screw, which is this lever here. So now it's going to use this lead screw to move the carriage instead of the, the power feed shaft. I do have a carbide thread cutting insert, but if these threads are as hard as the rest of this shaft, we're going to have trouble even with carbide. So I guess we'll just see what happens. So the half nuts are engaged, which means the carriage is locked to the lead screw. And I'm not gonna disengage them the whole time we cut this thread. I'm just gonna reverse the spindle. So we should be able to watch this and see how well it tracks and make sure our thread pitch is right. I think it's right. I think that's pretty close. Looks like we're leading that thread just a little bit. So I need to maneuver my 
my cross slide, my compound slide to get that right. This is the hardest part of chasing a thread is getting the, the threading tool lined up with the original thread. It's even harder with a CNC lathe. Ask me how I know. Give ourselves a little warm up. Okay. Well, it definitely cut. That might have been enough right there. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Might be just a tiny bit loose, but I'll take it. Yeah, that'll work. That wasn't too bad. I don't think there's anything else we really need to need to address here. I'm not going to say it's good, but given the circumstances, I think it's about the best we're going to do. Let's try to put it together. Uh, let's see. We probably want to put these bolts in first. So I bet they won't go in once it's assembled. Something's wrong. There it is. None the worse for wear. Okay, now we can put that back on. Because that's important. And we can take that out and figure out what the heck's going on here. I kind of remember this from the last time. I, think I had to gently massage it. spacer ring first. Let's try this again. This spacer goes in first and this bearing goes in on top. Okay. it. We're going to reinstall the seal. I packed it with some grease. Hopefully that keeps the spring where it should be. Now there's an o-ring. 
goes in like so. Okay, so that should seal that up. And we're going to install this dust shield and the nut. I had to push the seal down just a smidge more. It was rubbing on this dust shield. That's better. I don't know, I don't see a torque spec, so guess that means we can do whatever we want. Click. Beautiful. I think we've got enough here we can Lock this up. Yeah, that piece is going to break off. All right, well, that's not ideal. I'm going to see if I can widen out that notch a little bit, and then we'll have something to bend over. thing what's going on here some kind of rivets I guess yeah I don't know I don't remember that on the last one I did Seventeen? Yes. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's kind of weird when you just do something and it works. I'm not used to that. As far as I'm concerned, this thing is tip top, ready to be installed. I am shocked that it worked as well as it did, but I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm gonna return it, they're gonna install it, and we're all gonna live happily ever after. Thanks for watching. That appears to be a four-cylinder diesel engine jammed into a Farmall Cub. I don't know what that is. Pretty cool bell housing. This old Pettibone crane might be the saddest looking piece of equipment I've ever seen. Look at the boom on this thing. It's not an optical illusion, it is leaning. I think pretty much every weld has been re-welded. That one's cracked again. Yeah. I think that's a hard pass.